Hey, welcome back to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today we're cooking up some fish, so y'all stay tuned. Uh, today's dish is inspired by the Puerto Rican dish bacalao. Uh, if you guys don't know what bacalao is, it's uh, some uh, salt cured dried cod. Way the people in the old days in Puerto Rico used to preserve their fish for I don't know how long it'll keep. I guess we keep it dry for a long time. That stuff's kind of pain in the butt. You gotta soak it for like four days in water. Then it's still so salty you can't hardly eat it. Uh, that's why I had to cut it down. We're gonna use a lot of the parts of the bacalao recipe to make what we're going to do today, but we're gonna use our fresh largemouth bass fillets instead of the salty old bacalao. Believe me, this is, dish is awesome. I made it several occasions and uh, it's always good. All right, just for uh, all my fillet critics on the uh Trash Fisher Treasure Remora video. Uh, let me uh, demonstrate again how to play a regular fish. Uh, I got so much uh, comments on trying to uh, play a triangular fish that everybody thinks that I'm going to cut my hand off and uh, left all kinds of comments um, about my filleting skills. But again, those people that commented probably have never, um, ever filleted a remora. So I just want to let you guys know that, yeah, I do cut toward myself. I've been doing this for, uh, you know, 30 plus years. I've filleted thousands and thousands of fish, and I do know how to fillet a fish. And I've probably only had a very few accidents in my life, and I'm older than probably 10 of those people that commented put together. So, this is one of the things that comes from experience. So, now we got this, uh, this big boy here, and what I wanted to show you on the big boy here was how to get this cheek meat out. So, you catch one of these big ones like this, he's got quite a bit of um, meat right up here in this cheek so you can kind of open that up get that out of there and then uh, what I do is I just turn the knife back around leave it attached and just peel that cheek meat right off the skin like that and it's a beautiful tasty piece of meat let's go ahead and uh, okay we'll, well we're gonna out. make it on a uh, Dutch oven today. I don't know if that's the greatest idea. It's sprinkling rain. We're under here in the porch, but uh, well, first thing we got to do if you're going to make this, we need rice. So we got the little camp made number eight out here, and we got that uh, heating up, boiling some water. And uh, right here, I have uh, that's a cup and a half of water, three quarters of a cup of rice, and a half a teaspoon of salt. So we're going to go ahead and get that in there, and then uh, we'll stir it up. Let that come up to a boil and we'll put a lid on it and just like any other rice recipe, cook it 20 minutes. Alright folks, for the sofrito part of this uh, dish you're going to need a few things. You're going to need some uh, diced fire roast tomato. These are a uh, rotel with some green chilies in them. It's pretty spicy. I'm probably not going to use uh, all that. Uh, this sofrito tomato cooking base sauce is awesome. Um, this is one of the keys. Uh, this is chopped cilantro. This already this has a, quite a bit in it, but that's some fresh garlic, onions, and uh, the one thing I don't have out here right now is capers. And capers are very important for the flavor of this dish. And then I have some fresh um, largemouth bass fillets, completely deboned. And um, we're going to put these back in while we're getting some of the other components ready. So today uh, we're going to be using all the, uh, the cast iron. We've got the uh, rice going over here already. Uh, that seems to be boiling. It is. So uh, now that that's uh, 
that's going. Let's adjust a little bit. Prepared over here, I got like four or five coals on this uh, new plate that we made. I didn't notice that it, it is bowing a little bit, but that's okay. We're going to have a couple of different zones that we can cook on. Uh, right now we're getting this pot ready for deep frying. So that's heating up. We'll let our rice uh, keep on going, keep an eye on it. Alright folks, to, uh, to do the sauce part on this dish, we're going to whip out our 1700's uh, spider skillet. Okay. You, uh, if you don't have one of these, you can just use your, uh, you know, your regular cast iron. But this guy with those little feet on it make it great to keep charcoal going. So we'll go ahead and get that over there on the uh, third station we got set up. So we're able to get uh, three different devices right here on top of the uh, Weber kettle using this plate. Uh, I got this a stainless steel uh, so it wasn't rust or anything like that. So far it's working okay. It's bowing just a little. It's kind of a thinner, thinner metal but a uh, prototype. So everything seems to be working good so far. Okay, uh, one of the, the accompaniments for this dish traditionally is uh, plantain. So real quick, I'll show you how to. We're going to prep that. For all we're going to do is uh, take the ends off of it right here. You know, this is uh, this this uh, fruit is used more like a um, a starch than it is a fruit. You know, it's very firm. Uh, you know, you just need to take it and peel it. Sometimes that's easier said than done, depending on how, just how ripe it is. This one's pretty damn green. And it's not cooperating very well. So, I'm going to score it a little, a little further down. See if we can get a end of a fork in there. Kind of get started with it. And once you get it started, it does come right off, then it's a lot easier once you get it started. That's just that getting started part. Pretty tough. I'm reading this side here, he's tougher than the rest. Anyway, you just gotta get all that all that green husk off of them, however you got to do it. Right, got them out of the way. I'm going to cut it about an uh, inch and a half to inch and three quarter pieces. I'm going to go about an inch and a half. And these, you want them to be able to set into the oil on their end like that. So, Alright, we'll go ahead and we'll get them in the pan. Okay, while our plantains are starting to fry, we already got a little oil in our old skillet. We're going to go ahead and just come in there with about a quarter cup of onion. Just give those a little stir around and let them get started. Our two little end cuts, we might as well throw those in. Alright, we're just going to get this started. I'm going to come in with about a tablespoon and a half of fresh minced garlic. Tiny bit more oil. Facilitate all that. We'll keep an eye on our plantains over here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and flip them over, you know, so they start to turn kind of a different color. First time I've ever made these so I'm sure you guys that uh, have made them before will give me all kinds of comments on everything I'm doing wrong. So we want to watch this real close to make sure we don't uh, burn our garlic. Those onions are just starting to brown. So we're going to go in about half that can of Rotel. 
that is uh, the fire roasted with uh, green chili. I'd like there to be a little, a little spice on this. Okay, we're starting to lose some of our heat here, so we had started a few more uh, charcoals. This rice here is uh, that's very close to done. Uh, I'll a couple more minutes on that, and that's gonna be perfect. I don't know if you can uh, see in there, but that's beautiful. Little old camp mate. Hey, yeah, uh, I know, I know, guys, made in China. But you know, it's cast iron, so ain't much that can go wrong with that. I did notice that this 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 one does uh, rust easier um, than the lodge products do. So yeah, maybe not as pure of uh, iron, but just overall the quality is not as good. Alright, well those plantains are getting about right. And these are going to get fried twice, so I'm going to take them out here very, very shortly. And we're going to crush them. Show you that next. All right, we're back to our uh, our sauce over here. We got our tomatoes in there and uh, onions and garlic. Now it's going to head and uh, add the sofrito sauce. And I'm going to use about half of this jar to start with. And we're going to just give that a stir in there and see how that kind of works out. We may have to add some moisture. This stuff is delicious, by the way. Mm. Alright guys, this rice is done. We're going to go ahead and take it off. Now we can uh, use these coals that we had under the rice to help supplement some of our heat. And the wind is blowing quite a bit here, so burning the coals down pretty quick. I got another another chimney started right there right now. So let to get that going. Maybe it'll be ready by the time we're ready. All right. So to make the tostales, tostales, which is uh, fried plantains, I like. I'm gonna try to use this. Uh, this saucer here because it has a kind of an indentation we keep it from flattening out too far so we're just going to put it right on top of it and just squish it okay and if you do it right it will kind of stay together all right just like that so that actually worked pretty well well let's go ahead and try another one all right that's a pretty big one huh I'm using a knife to help get it loose They actually make tools for this, but uh, it seems to be working okay. All right, coming back to our sauce now. It's looking pretty well. Um, we're going to go ahead and put in uh, this is about two tablespoons of capers. Uh, don't leave those out. It's a very important part of the flavor of this thing. And that's about two tablespoons of fresh cilantro, give or take. All right, we're going to go ahead and stir that in, and then this is about a half a cup of seafood stock. And we do have some more charcoal just about ready, so we're going to go ahead and uh, play with the flames here a little bit. You know, we are cooking on charcoal, we don't, we don't have a stove here. And pardon the uh, fan noise in the background, I had to uh, blow some of the smoke out uh, since we're under the porch here, uh, with raining on us. Hey guys, now uh, fish prep time. Now, you know, these flays, you, you know, these are freshwater fish, so they don't have that very pronounced uh, red meat like, uh, like other fish uh, from saltwater do. Um, but what we're going to do here is just going to go ahead and split them right down the middle. And then this thin meat up here by where the rib was, that's what we're going to keep right now for this step. So we just want that uh, that rib meat there. 
We do want to make sure though that it, that's completely bone free and you feel it real good. Um, we did a pretty good job on the uh, fillet table with these. So we're just going to take the rib meat off only and uh, let's clean that up a little bit. Okay, if it's got anything on there that don't look good, just scarf it off. Now I'm going to go ahead and take these and put them right into our, our sofrito sauce now so they have time to cook and break down. heat going. So a couple more charcoals and nestle those around. Go ahead and get that going get that guy going. It's almost ready. Uh, same with our, our grease over here for the uh, fried plantain. Okay we're gonna go ahead and uh, drop the tostales now. And this is our uh, second time we're gonna fry them. These are really big. About the perfect amount for that pot. So we've refired our coals and you know I've got a few more, another dozen over here. Just want to keep everything moving. It's all smelling really good. Got our costales going. And uh, we have a few other items that are traditionally served with this meal. Uh, going on inside uh, due to the weather basically and we'll show you those when we get ready to serve it up all right They're nice and crispy I'm gonna go ahead and take them out uh, these are very much like uh, potatoes not anything like bananas so as soon as you get them out of there while they're still hot and a little bit of the oil is coming out on them Give them a good sprinkle of salt. We'll flip them over and do the same thing on the other side. Really gonna need some salt. Give you, you know, just like just like potatoes. Gotta have a little bit of salt. But those turned out pretty good. I want to kind of break that up. so our sauce is going pretty good it's thickening up so I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little bit that's maybe a little more than a quarter cup of red wine in it it's gonna help with the color and flavor of this dish now that the wine's in we're gonna go ahead and just arrange our fish um, steaks right over the top of the sauce now at this point we don't want to stir it anymore. We want these to uh, we want these to stay whole. Okay, and we're just going to nestle them down in the sauce there, and just let them cook. No more stirring. That's about perfect. The fish is done. We're going to go ahead and take it off the fire, and let it finish up on some. Remember it's in cast iron, so. This guy is going to uh, he's going to cook for a while yet. So get him over here on the steel table. And I'll let him hang out. Alright folks, everything's ready, so here we're gonna start our plate. Uh, that rice is cooled down a little bit now. I'm gonna start with a ramekin of rice. I just put a little bit of uh, a little bit of oil in the and push it around inside this ramekin. So we're gonna take some rice and we're gonna just pack it, pack it right down in the ramekin. And of course we're making a mess, but the table's clean so we can pick that up. Pack that down in there. And uh, we're gonna try to turn it out. May or may not work. See what happens. There you go. 
Okay, so we got our tostadas or fried fried plantains. I'm gonna kind of put those over here on the side. Now these uh these are the Manzolano bananas. I don't really know what to do with these. They are very starchy, like a potato. So I'm gonna put those over here. Um, this whole dish is a starch fest. All right, here's one of our banana leaves for our pasteles. Pasteles. Uh, I actually did make these pasteles. I'm gonna bring over a small portion of one of them. So there we go. We already have uh, one, two, three, four starches. All right, four starches. But believe me, every one of these has their their own uh, unique characteristic, and that's why we have this beautiful sauce to go with all that starches. So I'm gonna start with just uh, you know we don't want to break the fillets up. Sauce and fish right down over the middle of that. A little more. There. I just tried this. It was awesome. The uh, there's a little bit of cilantro. This just already has quite a bit in it, but um, it's going to be even more. This dish really does have a lot of different flavors going on um, uh, with the capers, the, the tomatoes, the fish, the pastele, which is basically uh, corn uh, that was cooked wrapped in a banana leaf. Uh, and the little bananas, the little green bananas are really fairly awesome on their own, but with that sauce they really are great. And for our final garnish, remember those cheek pieces we made. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, launch those guys right there on top along with the rest of the fish. And that's going to give a great texture complement to the softer fish. Again, that is uh, the Backwoods Gourmet Twist on a bacalao uh, with, with uh, fried plantains, baby green bananas, Pasteles, rice, and an art twist. Hey, thanks for watching the Backwoods Gourmet. You know, I've had the original version of this dish with the old salted cod. That's what we just made there. Way better. Way better. Okay? In my opinion. Way better. So thanks for watching the Backwoods Gourmet. As always, please subscribe, share, comment. Hey, if you like what we're doing, hit that like button. We'll see you next time.